Good morning, welcome to Wellbeing Wednesday, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Fiona Brennan-Scott from Bespoken. Um, and Fiona teaches people how to use their voice, don't you, Fiona? Welcome. I do. I do, yes. I teach people to use their voice with a little V and a capital V. So I think of the voice as being what's made here in the voice box, but also the capital V is your identity, isn't it? It's your voice in the world. It's how you express yourself. Absolutely. And I know you teach people to use their voice on a professional level, but also on a personal level. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is when you have something, you know you're going to have a difficult conversation with somebody, especially if it's somebody close to you, you're going to upset them or you think you might be making them cross. Um, how hard is it to get that voice inside of you out? And how important is it to make sure that, that you are true to yourself? Well, I think it's really important. I think they've identified illnesses and you probably know a, a lot more about this than me, where people who suppress their voice and suppress themselves and their identity and don't talk about things. I mean, that can lead to cancer. Mm -hmm. I think they have made links. I'm sure it can lead to heart disease because of the stress it causes. So it's really important that we learn how to communicate effectively with others because we end up having better quality relationships, but also we live longer and healthier. Mm. No, that, that you're right. There's definite links um, between sort of being true to yourself and, and sort of not keeping things bottled up inside and, and physical um, illnesses. But you, you, you talk about um, a time to think. Tell me a little bit more about that because it fascinates me. Okay, so I want to just touch on something you made me think of when you spoke just now. I've just finished a six week course with an extraordinary woman called Jane Gunn. She's a, a mediator on an international scale. And she said, we speak least about what matters most. Mm, yes, it's true. And it's so true. So it's important to talk about it, but sometimes it may be beneficial to talk through it with someone before you actually speak to the person in question because mm -hmm. of the, the shrapnel, I guess, of conflict and mm -hmm. that conversation. And you don't want to lose the relationship, but you also value the relationship enough not to keep quiet any longer. There comes a critical point where you need to speak. Yeah. Now, Time to Think is an amazing, it's on the very independent spectrum of, co of independent thinking. So there's a spectrum where you want a lot of involvement from your coach and the other end is where you want to think for yourself. And this is very much independent thinking. And it's generative thinking. It's thinking without interruption in a space for a time where it's my role as a coach to help you think well, to help you think better without interruption. And that means asking questions that help a person to think. And even in silence, people can be thinking well and thinking generatively. So it's about being comfortable with the silence, but also inviting a question when the person needs a prompt to move on. Mm. The founder of, of Time to Think, Nancy Klein, she talks about waves of thinking and pauses. So when there's a pause and the person needs a prompt, they can just ask and we help them to move on. Now, when it comes to what you've raised, I think, so I, I work with the business world, value-based businesses, faith-based businesses, a lot of individuals who want to invest in their their effective communication skills. And the human mind is an extraordinary thing. I mean, we, we invest millions, billions in, in space exploration, yep. but we know so little about the human mind. But what I've found in the time I've been using time to think, I qualified last, in March, I was going to say last month, but it's already May. <laughs> so I got my time to think certified um, coaching certificate well after yeah after three years of studying it's an extraordinary extraordinary methodology but what I've learned is that the human mind does not differentiate between thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. so 
if we hold back our feelings, we don't think as well. If we acknowledge our feelings and express them, we can move on and think brilliantly. But also the human mind doesn't differentiate between personal and professional. So I remember on the foundation course at Henley Business School asking Nancy Klein, what happens if the client goes somewhere that you can't get them back from? And she looked at me and she said, my dear, you're not taking them anywhere. She <laughs> said very gently. And it's so true because if we are, if we have an issue in our personal life, it will spill over into our professional life in terms of how we interact with people. Something might trigger us. Our tolerances are lower. Mm -hmm. And actually, if we don't deal with that, if that's bothering us and and we we invest in a time to think and you're asked that question, what would you like to think about today and what are your thoughts? That might be the very thing that you need to unravel, to unknot, yeah. to analyze. And actually thinking about it and investing time to think in it, you may come to some amazing realizations about yourself, about the situation that you'd never thought before. You examine assumptions, you remove untrue assumptions, and you find what is true and liberating that will help you. And it could be that actually you recognize that you don't need to talk to that person at all. It's actually something entirely different that you've mm -hmm. never even imagined. But that if you do decide to talk to the person, it will be a thoughtful interaction mm -hmm. where you can come to some good place together or even recognize that not, now is not the time. But it is that planning and that thinking through that helps a person to make better decisions, I think. Absolutely. And I think sometimes as well, there's a certain amount of courage involved in having those conversations, whether it's personally or professionally. Absolutely. Courage is... A, actually, I watched... The, I don't know if you've seen it, the film of Mulan on the weekend. Not the animated, but the actual film. No. And the word chi is used for courage. And it's what comes from within. And courage is amazing in terms of fueling our ability to step up and step out and to speak. Mm. But also one of the 10 components of the thinking environment is encouragement. And encouragement gives is giving others courage. So in an encouraging environment, we think really well and we can have the courage to say what we believe and it's also an environment without judgment so it's a space where we feel safe to express our thinking and I think what you're talking about about having to bring up something that may be unpleasant it may not feel like a very safe space mm. so it's really good to play and practice with our thinking in a space that is safe I think that's brilliant. It's amazing. Um, and your advice is is just spot on. I was going to say tips, but I know you don't give tips because tips are superficial. Am I right? <laughs> you have been listening, Nancy. Of um, I, I almost called you Nancy. What a compliment, Nancy. <laughs> that is so true, Sandy, because I think life is too short and to just cover things over with a Band-Aid when we can actually go deep deep and find find real healing yeah. and true mental health we can just move on and we can thrive instead of just surviving I think you're absolutely right Fiona and thank you so much for joining me today um, you've been absolutely wonderful and hopefully we can talk again soon it's been a pleasure have a great week Take bye bye care. bye bye spot on <laughs> that was better come on